What is going on guys, it's your boy GS And uh, welcome to Madden 25 The cheesiest team in the game I already see it, I can sense it I'm going to give you guys a breakdown on the four teams That are in the Madden 25 demo Which was released today We have Seahawks and Packers Seahawks rated over uh, 90 overall Packers are 88 So, so far the Niners are overall 91 Baltimore Ravens are 87 I don't see another team being rated higher than the Niners that hasn't been put in here. Uh, I just don't see it. So I, to my knowledge, I'm thinking San Francisco is going to start off the season with the highest rated team. And uh, a lot of cheesiness. I'm going to give you guys a breakdown on all of their uh, attributes, their position, maybe some depth chart setups, and uh, how I am going to be facing this team a lot in the upcoming season. I faced them a lot in Madden 13. Madden 14, Madden 25, whatever it is you want to call it, I see the same result. I see everybody going back to the Niners because they are better, possibly, than they were in Madden 13. And that's a scary thought, to think that they are better. I think they have a better Kaepernick, a better Frank Gore, better receiving core. Their linebackers are even more steroid up. They're more just ridiculous. Uh, oh, my God. With the addition of awesome, it's just, all right, let's get into it. Colin Kaepernick starts off at an 89 overall. Damn near 90. Speed, damn near 90. So, I mean, basically, same thing for Madden 13. You know what you're going to deal with. You have a quarterback that can take off, and he's going to be faster than probably all of your linebackers and linemen. you got to be worried of him. His agility is 91. This guy is a running back when he takes off. 91 agility, man. That's insane. Um, that's pretty high. I know there's other quarterbacks that's going to have that. But um, it's just going to be nuts with the when Kaepernick takes off. His juke move is 88. Damn near 94 juke move. So one juke and he's probably going to be breaking free. It, oh my God. I can just see the teams I'm going to be going up against. There's Niners, 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 Niners. Um, his throw power and accuracy is, is pretty good, man. Is And you got Frank Gore who's a 93 overall with a 90 speed. Uh, you're probably going to see a lot of him and Michael James in there with 93 speed. So, same thing as you saw in Madden 13. So, uh, good acceleration, high trucking, uh, you know, very decent elusiveness, big stiff arm. Big stiff arm with a decent spin move, um, you know, high juke. The guy is just overall going to break tackles, same as he did in Madden 13. So, you're still going to have to deal with the same tough to tackle Frank Gore, sprinkled in with the speed of Michael James. Bruce Miller is a beast of a fullback at 88 overall. You know, he's going to be able to running statistics, not so good. Speed, kind of slow, as all fullbacks usually are, unless you play for the Raiders where everybody has to run a 4-3 in order to be drafted. But nonetheless, good blocking. You know, so whenever you're in an I form or split close or anything that involves a fullback, you have a very good blocker in front of you that's going to be able to open holes. And oh my God, the lineman. Don't get me started on the lineman for the Niners. So right now, you see we got Bolden. We got Crabtree on the bottom because he is possibly out for the season. So uh, once you reorder, auto reorder depth chart, there he is, pops right on top. So you got Crabtree and Bolden and Manningham and Williams all the way down, who I would put in just for speed alone. I would put in uh, Lockett because that 96 speed, you know, there's not too many receivers that possess that speed. So I would use them possibly in the number four or number five spot. But nonetheless, you have two beasts. Uh, possession receivers. Crabtree and Bolden aren't the fastest, but San Francisco has four receivers that are two good possession receivers, and then you got Manningham and Williams for speed. So Crabtree and Bolden for possession, and then you got uh, Manningham and Williams for speed, which is very good. Uh, awareness, Bolden is going to be your sideline guy. He is going to be the guy picking up the necessary block. He's going to be the guy keeping his feet in bounds. His awareness is 95. That's nuts. He is going to be making incredible plays, like I said, on the sideline, keeping feet in bounds. Uh, he's going to be picking up good blocks because his awareness is very high. Elusiveness is not too high for the top two, but very good for Manningham, who is a 95. Which means, uh, you know, I wouldn't challenge a linebacker, but cornerbacks are going to be tough to, to, to tackle Irving. I mean, uh, Williams, because his... His, elusive, his elusiveness is high as hell. Bolden has a 95 stiff arm, which is going to be big. As you see, the juke move for Manningham is a 94, and Williams is close to a 90. So 
So both of those guys should be able to shake some cornerbacks out of the way, which is going to be good to be able to advance the ball. And Crabtree as well has close to a 90 juke move. Uh, route running, very important. Crabtree is a monster at the route running. Now, route running is going to be your out routes, your slants, your outposts. Uh, anything basically other than the streak, because streak is just pure speed. But what can help you separate yourself from a cornerback? Route running is that, and Crabtree is a monster. Both the Manningham Williams, they're not so good, but Crabtree is going to be the one guy who creates the most separation on the field because of his route running is very high. So that's a, a definitely good thing to go to. And uh, catching traffic, oh my God. Bowden is damn near in 99. That just means being able to catch the ball and hold on to it while getting hit. So Bolden is going to be the guy who you want over the middle, who you throw into the end zone when there's five people around him. He is going to be a sure bet to hold on to the ball. And Crabtree is no slouch either at a, a low 90. He's also going to be able to hold on to the ball. Spectacular catch. You got Manningham with the 93. And uh, B press, you got the top two guys, 90. Uh, Bolden is a 92. So those two guys are going to be tough to press. So they're easily going to be able to beat press all game long. So it's going to be tough defending them too. Um, and then you got the speed and the slot and Manningham and Williams. Tight end, you already know, uh, possibly the best tight end in Madden. Only because his speed. His speed is 90. Most of the time, he's going to get matched up with a linebacker. And he's going to be faster than your linebacker. You know, unless you got Patrick Willis. And hey, he happens to play for the Niners. You know, there's not too many, maybe a Bobby Wagner, but there's not too many linebackers that has pure speed that can keep up with Vernon Davis. That's what makes him so good. You know, his catching isn't the best. You know, you have other tight ends that are better. You know, Gronk and da I'm Dallas Clark. That's the same Madden. No way, baby. Um, you know, maybe Tony uh, Gonzalez. You know, there's plenty of other tight ends that can catch better. But he's faster, which makes him better in Madden because Madden is a game where speed dominates. Look at this offensive line. This is where I lost it. A 96 on the left guard. A 95 on the left guard. I mean, a 96 on the left tackle. If you look at left guard, uh, Staley's a 99. If uh, Lapati, or I'm not sure how to say his name, Lup Lupati, I, I don't know how to say his name. Excuse me if I'm saying it wrong. Most likely I am. But uh, clearly a 96 and a 95 is better than an 82 and a 99. So you got a 96 at left tackle, and then you have a 95 at left guard. So the left side of the, the line is just incredible. It's four knocks over there. 96 and 95. The center is no slouch at 85. You know, uh, not the best, but not the worst. Then you have almost a 90 on the right. And then at the right tackle, you have another 90. So you got two 90s on the right, two 95s on the left, and 85 in the center. That's incredible. That line is just monstrous and is going to help create lanes for Frank Gore and all those running backs. Left end, you have, of course, Alden Smith, capable of a 99. Smith at a 91. Brooks at a 91. And Harrelson at 88, which is just insane. But McDonald's at 89 himself. So uh, then you got Justin Smith, who's a 94. You still have Alden Smith, capable of a 99. Then you got McDonald. Everybody pretty much starts to fall off there. Uh, D tackle, you uh, not the best. So uh, what I would do to get some pressure is the way I would set it up. I would possibly put... On the left end, I would probably go with Harrelson and then put on the right end Alden Brooks at a 99. And then D tackle, I'll put Justin Smith and all in uh, McDonald at D tackle. So that would give me basically 90s across the board a 99 on the right, uh, 88, 89 on the left. D tackles would be 95 and 89. So there's basically four 90s all across the board, including a 95 and a 99, which is insane. Then you got your linebackers. Oh, my God. The linebackers. The linebackers for this team. 97 overall and 93 overall for Willis and Bowman. Their hit power and hitting and tackling is just ridiculous. 96 tackling to 99 tackling. Then 95 ta 96 tackling. And then not there, everybody can tackle. And everybody hits hard. The fumbles, I'm even thinking, I'm about to fumble my mic just by looking at this hit power. Everybody can hit hard. Um, how many fumbles did this team cause in real life for them to hit so damn hard in Madden? It's just crazy. Their linebackers are studs in this game. They have Asamoah starting off at the free safety position. 
Uh, so I put him in the nickel. You know, I have him at the number three spot. So it'll be Carlos Rogers, Brown, Asamoah, Culliver, and Brock, which is a very good nickel. You know, you got a 90, you got an 88, and a 93. I definitely believe Asamoah will be one of the better cornerbacks in the league this year because, uh, again, they're going to play more to his play style. And I definitely don't see him being an 80 overall for the rest of the year. I definitely see him being boosted up to at least a 90 at some point, maybe even higher, because the pressure the 49ers get in real life, uh, they're just going to... I just definitely see Asamoah playing a lot better this year, and I see him getting back to that Pro Bowl status. And if he does, this could possibly be one of the greatest teams in Madden history if Asamoah returns to a shutdown corner. You just look at the cornerbacks, man. Their man coverages are good. Their play recognitions are good. Their zone coverages are good. Just, I mean, they're, they're not studs. You know, they're not the corners that, let's say, the Seahawks have. But they get the job done. And with their linebacking core and their front, just their front seven alone, to have, you know, pretty good linebackers, I mean, pretty good corners, is going to make for a, just a very tough defense. So you got these ridiculous linebackers in front line. And the cornerbacks are... Good enough to be able to, you know, hold their own. Like I said, they're not going to have the best coverage, the best pressing, the best zones. But um, same thing as in Madden 13, you can cause just random one-man pressure. So the coverage really doesn't have to be the best. And you look at free safety, Eric Reed. Look at that hit power, man. 93. The rookie has 93 hit power. He is going to be a duplicate. Or possibly the late great rest in peace Sean Taylor who was one of the most fun to uh, watch safeties ever like oh my god that dude was a wrecking ball 93 hit power so imagine starting him right and then you have on the opposite side you have um, uh, Dante Whitner and his hit power is like what is it like 89 or something like that so you have 93 89 hit power in the safeties Thank God, as you see me look, I look at the, the cornerbacks, their hit power isn't high. But Jesus Christ, even the safeties hit hard. I mean, to add Reed with 93 hit power to Whitner and his tackling and his 89 hit power, that's just nuts to have everybody on the field that can cause a fumble. Everybody on the field hits hard. The safeties hit hard. The linebackers, oh my God, they hit hard. So... Just the second level is hard hitting guys, and so far, I think this team is just gonna be the cheesiest team to use online. Let me know what team you guys want me to do next either the Packers, the Ravens, or the Seahawks, and I'll give you know you guys my breakdown on how I think they will do online as far as their team and all that. Phil Dawson, the accurate kicker, not too much kicking power, that's definitely a downgrade from Akers, Andy Lee. Is one of the best punters in the game. Too bad. Not too many people choose to punt. So you probably won't get to use him too much. Kick returner. I would probably go with LaMichael James. But Cox is a 95. I'm sure his uh, his ball carrying is a lot higher. So, uh, you know, less riskier turnovers. But I would probably go with the 93 speed over the 90. But uh, kickoff starter Andy Lee is going to be able to boot the ball down there with his 98 kick power. And that's it, man. That's my opinions on the 49ers. Uh, the cheesiest team in the game last year. And I think it's going to be the same thing this year. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what team you guys want me to do next. It's your boy GS, and I'm out. Peace. Give it to me, baby.